five minutes with Eric. So I just did a one minute. We're going to unpack a lot more. So your employer has just been served with a wage garnishment on your salary. And so first of all, to all the employers out there, you must respond. If you do not respond, the debt becomes the company's debt. Wrap your head around that. So you have some guy working for you. The guy gets into some financial trouble years before. He gets a judgment against him, he or she. Then the garnishment paper gets served on your company. The person at your front desk answers the door and accepts the service of process and then forgets to tell you about it or throws it away or misplaces the paperwork or whatever. And by the way, I've seen all these versions of the story. And so then a few months later, you find out that now they're going after you for the full amount that the other guy owed. Um, now, there might be a way out of that. Maybe there's an argument about service of process, but it's a problem you don't want to have. So first things first, employers, you must respond, call your lawyer, make sure you do the right thing. Now, from the perspective of the employee, they say, hey, listen, we're going to take 25% of your paycheck. If you are entitled to an exemption, here's a form, fill it out. You got to go to court. You got to have a hearing and you have to say that, for example, if you're the head of household in Florida, which means you have uh, responsibility for at least 51% of the financial burden of a dependent, that's head of household. If your spouse makes more money than you, then you're not the head of household. Um, just for example. So anyways, there's, so this guy calls me and he says, I got this garnishment issue. So I pull up the case. Now it pulls up a 2011 case. All right. This is a, this is the, the, the tail end of a 2011 case. And here's what happened procedurally. First of all, there was another case. So I had to look up the other case and the other case was a foreclosure on his house. Okay. So for those of you who weren't old enough to remember in 08, 9, 10, 11, 12, there were a whole lot of foreclosures. It led to the great recession, led to a giant financial crisis. We had crazy unemployment in our country. Like right now we're at like 3.4, 3.5%. In 2010 or 11, I think we peaked at like 15% unemployment. It was crazy, it was bad times. And a lot of that was due to the subprime mortgage crisis. I won't go too deep into that, but I talked to this guy at the low payer tax clinic I was working at in law school and we resolved his IRS issue. And he goes, Hey, can you help me with something else? And I said, what's that? And he said, uh, my mortgage just doubled in the amount I have to pay every month. I can't afford it anymore. And I was like, Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. We're a tax clinic. I can't really help you. But if I had been smarter, I had that same conversation three times. I would have been like, uh Oh, something's happening. And then uh, sure enough, six months later, wall street collapsed. And so a lot of people couldn't pay their mortgages. So check this out. They foreclosed his house and they said that at the time of the foreclosure, he owed $250,000 on the mortgage. Well, they then sold the house at foreclosure auction for $15,000. I can't even wrap my head around that. A house for $15,000. I've had an Amex bill for more than $15,000. And the guy, apparently somebody at auction bought this guy's house at $15,000. Okay. So then what happens is the foreclosure happens. They sell the house that's done. Then the bank, they usually have mortgage insurance. And so they apply to their mortgage insurance. They get some money back from that. And so when all was said and done, the gentleman still owed the bank $80,000. So then this is the lawsuit that now happens. They sue him for the $80,000. He then says, well, I never knew about it. I go, okay, well, let's check it out. It has a return of service on the docket. I can pull it up. It's a like modern world, right? PDFs. So I pull it up and it says that a woman about 30 years old with glasses, with brown hair, who um, answered the door at this particular address, accepted service. And he goes, well, you know, I was like, well, were you staying there? He goes, yeah, I was staying there. I'm like, okay, well, that where you were living at the time? He goes, yeah, that's where I was living at the time. And I'm like, do you know who they're describing? He goes, yeah, that sounds like my girlfriend. And I said, okay, so they served your girlfriend at the place you normally reside. That qualifies as good service of process. Now, the crazy thing, just as an aside, who's to say she didn't just throw it in the trash or put it in a stack of papers and he never saw it or forget to tell him, you know, and these are all arguments you might be able to make that he never got notified. Well, sure enough, a few months go by, they move for a default judgment. So now we've got, first of all, was there a foreclosure, sir? Yeah, there was a foreclosure. And did you know about the lawsuit? Well, maybe. And then they got a judgment because he didn't answer. They just got what's called a default judgment. And now here we are eight years later and they've, uh, they're, they're going after his wages. And then the argument is, okay, sh should we go back to the beginning and fight the original case? Should we go back and fight the service of process? 
or should we just try to accept it for what it is and put you as head of household and claim an exemption? And so the gentleman has some decisions to make. So lots to unpack here. Don't ignore service of process. Don't ignore lawsuits. Don't ignore wage garnishments. You're noticing a theme here. And if you guys have any questions about this, if any of you guys want to go dust off a judgment and go after somebody that owes you money, or if you're defending one of those and want to see if there's a way out of it, leave a comment below and we'll get in touch with you.